Hey everybody, what's going on and welcome to Guns N' Roses Central and with Guns N' Roses ready to play Rock in Rio this coming week, I want to talk about several things I hope they do at the actual festival. Rock in Rio has got a special place in the history of Guns N' Roses with the band having played Brazil three times over the past 30 years as part of the festival. And uh, let's talk about seven things I hope Guns N' Roses do at Rock in Rio. So number one is pretty obvious. I think every fan wants it. I hope they live stream this concert. Uh, they've uh, given us pro shot footage of every show that Guns have done in Brazil as part of Rock in Rio, whether it's 91, 2001, or 2011. And typically when Guns played Rock in Rio, uh, they would have that live streamed. Although it was kind of a surprise when Guns played Coachella back in 2016 they only live streamed part of the show and there's only several songs that are actually shot in uh, pro shot quality although we do know that Guns N' Roses uh, have every single one of their shows since the Use Your Illusion tour uh, professionally shot it's just sitting in a vault somewhere number two for the love of God, guys, please change up the set list. And this isn't meant as an insult or a swipe of Guns N' Roses. It's meant to be more of a compliment. They have such a great uh, list of songs. And we've been teased with that alternate set list for so long. If you guys don't remember, they had Slither from Velvet Revolver on that set list. They had Perfect Crime, which... Personally, I don't know if I'd want to hear on this tour, just given the state of Axel's voice. And uh, they also have other songs like You're Crazy, which they haven't even played on this actual tour. So there's a ton of songs that they could play where, you know, Axel doesn't have to use as much rasp, but it's just a shame that they're choosing not to do so. That they just haven't been playing on the uh, Not In This Lifetime tour. Please change up the set list and ditch some of the covers. Uh, even Guns N' Roses back in the day would rail against bands who never changed their set list as you guys can see in these interviews from 1991 and this performance from St. Louis in 1991 as well. Your shows are good with those set lists. I guess it keeps you on your toes. It keeps the lighting guys and the sound guys on their toes too. Um, you know, our shows, we never had a, like a perfect show. You know, like a lot of bands, I will say names or whatever, they have like this set list and say the same thing in between songs yeah. every night. That's the going to a nine to five job for me. Yeah. And rock and roll is fun. You know, it's 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 anarchy. It's <laughs> spontaneous, you know, and it's 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 violent, you know? And if if you become stayed, you know, with the set race, yeah. it becomes Yeah, it becomes just like so it keeps us on our toes, keeps everybody on the toes, so there's a lot of energy every night. We don't use a set list. We just pick song to song on how it feels and what we think we can perform best and what I think vocally I can do best because it's still warming up. I figure, you know, we're going to go out and give as much as we can every time, but I figure a real Guns N' Roses show, what we're shooting for, hopefully I might have in six months. I mean, I mean that thing I, was, I told you last time, it's like Jagger was working on getting that stage thing together for a really long time, yeah. you know, and learned a lot from him. You know, so we're hoping that in six months we can actually have different set yeah. orders and things and have it planned out so it's a lot more dramatic. Yeah. You know, and there'll be additions to the stage set up and the lighting. And well, what am I supposed to do with it? Huh? What am I supposed to do with it? Huh? Oh, that was worth fucking interrupting me for, I guess. No, it wasn't, dude. Tell you a little bit about this show. We there might be a delay between different songs because we just have this big fucking list and we pick which song we're gonna play next as we go to see how it feels best with you. That way we don't get bored and, and you don't go and I saw that show in Toledo. Fuck that shit. Also, we'll be playing a lot of new stuff, seeing as how you people have waited a really long time for the album to come out. And it'd be kind of a really pussyish thing to do to just come up here and play Appetite for Destruction. It's kind of like jerking off.
Number three, Ditch the Seeker and the set list. The Who are playing the same night as Guns N' Roses, and there's no reason that fans have to hear The Seeker twice. Guns N' Roses have so many great songs. Please replace it with something else. Or I wouldn't be surprised if Guns N' Roses shorten up the set list and don't play The Seeker and maybe play a shorter encore. So we'll have to wait and see, but who knows, maybe they'll bring some of the members of The Who out to actually perform with them. Although, part of me thinks it's unlikely because Roger Daltrey took a swipe at Axl Rose when it was announced that he was going to be replacing Brian Johnson in ACDC. Here's what he had to say about Axl. So, back uh, in 2016, Roger Daltrey called ACDC with Axl Rose karaoke. He said, I think ACDC will miss Brian Johnson much more than Brian will miss ACDC, the Who singer says. So, he was speaking to the London Free Press, and Daltrey railed against ACDC for their curt treatment of Johnson after the singer revealed he could no longer tour due to ear issues that could result in total hearing loss. He said, I mean, I really feel bad for Brian, Daltrey said. It must be heartbreaking for him after all the service he's given to that band over the years. I thought their farewell statement to the press and to Brian was fairly curt to say the least. I felt for him that must have hurt. He also was asked whether he would actually go see ACDC with Axl Rose, and he didn't seem like he was a big fan. He said, I've spoken to Brian. He's got loads of other things he wants to do in life. Daltrey said, I think ACDC will miss Brian more than Brian will miss ACDC. There you go. What do you expect from Australians? And he's such a lovely guy. Brian, I've known him for 40 years. As for Rose serving as lead singer of ACDC, don't expect Daltrey to be in the audience for any of the band's 20 rescheduled rocker bus shows. I mean, go and see karaoke with Axl Rose. Give me a break, the Who singer said. Number four, even though we don't think Izzy Stradlin or Steven Adler is going to show up for Rock in Rio to even make a guest appearance, it's likely we could see Angus Young. He made a number of appearances in Europe when Guns N' Roses were touring there this past summer, and he also appeared at Coachella in 2016. Although one thing I'd like to see Guns N' Roses do is play something different than Whole Lot of Rosie or Riff Raff. I mean, Axel filled in for Brian Johnson. He can sing a number of different ACDC songs, so why not change it up when Angus Young comes on stage? Number five, I hope Axel talks a bit more between the songs and even may tell some interesting stories. Like if you guys remember when Guns N' Roses played a show in Buffalo, Axel told a little story about Coma and this was something that nobody had ever really heard before. Here's the audio from the clip and I hope Axel does more of this about some of the other Guns N' Roses songs because it's hard to do true story episodes when you're only basing it on interviews that were done 20-30 years ago. <laughs> I'm going to introduce the band, but before that, I'm just going to share a little piece of trivia on that, on the song Coma. Um, when we recorded that song, when we recorded Use Your Illusions, everybody was involved in different parts of the writing, but, but only one person came down once to help with the vocals, and that was to help with one word. Flash came down to make sure I got the word, God damn it, right. Just sharing that with you. It was very, very, very important to him that we got the, the right pronunciation and the right inflection on the word God damn it. Just saying. Well, on the guitar. To my right, Mr. Richard Fortes. On the bass, Mr. Duff McKagan. The man who never knew you could tune a piano down half a step, Mr. Dizzy fucking Reed. As he put it, the bane of his existence. And on the so that does it for five things I'd like to see Guns N' Roses do at Rock in Rio. Let me know what things you'd like to see them do at their upcoming show. I also did a Guns N' Roses True Story episode about their past history with the festival. So I've linked to that down below for you guys to go check out. And, you know, we've got another week off, and then Guns N' Roses are going to be playing South America, and then they'll be coming back through North America and playing until the end of November. So I think 2017 is going to be uh, finishing with a strong Guns N' Roses presence. But 2018 is really up in the air, and we'll have to wait and see. But thanks for watching, guys. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video, and be sure to subscribe if you love Guns N' Roses as much as I do. And you guys can also follow me on Facebook and Twitter. The links to my social media channels are down below. And you can also go support my channel on Patreon. The link to my Patreon page is down below as well. We're also going to be having some more great True Story episodes talking about their controversial Argentina show since Guns are playing Argentina as part of this uh, upcoming leg of the tour. 
and then we'll be doing a bunch of more great True Story episodes. I also want to let you guys know that if you guys are going to the Vegas show on November 17th of this year, let me know in the comments section. Uh, we've got some, we may be having some special featurettes on that specific show. So that does it for today's show. Thanks for watching, guys, and have yourself a good one.